Today I want to make custom cable ties for my tech with my logo. The catch is, it's with a laser cutter that I've never used before, which requires software that I've never used before, and we also need to make a design which I've never done before. I know I'm optimistic, but is there any other way to live? Well, I didn't foresee a laser beam that could shoot me in the eye. Shout out to Creality for sending their new Falcon 2 Pro 40 watt laser. I'm stoked to try something new. Oh my gosh, the footprint of this thing's huge. Okay, it's gonna require some building. Now we're getting there. All right, I need to read this manual. Bro, they put their freaking fan on over the protective film. Oh, so much better. That didn't surely couldn't have been me. I just replayed the unboxing. That wasn't me. That was factory dim. Well, it even fits the door. Yep, yeah, fits. Okay, so this cable tie design should be quite simple. I want to use these little push through pin things. Screw back stud. They're like two parts. Now I have made this cable tie in the past. It's similar to what I'm after, but it uses this like push button, but stuck being one size for the cables. But since this will push through the leather, it can be like a bolt. So I can have like multiple holes for different size cables. Oh, that was a time and a time I need to go to my haircut. Man, things aren't going to plan today. We'll get to the surprise that caused a delay, but to stay on track today, the next day, we'll start with a sketch. Although I've never designed something with these push through pins before, I'm sure it can't be that tricky. I'm gonna put my logo in the center. Remember, we make the decision to consume or create. I thought I could put the logo to the right and replace the create record icon with the push through pin, but then I realized that when I wrap the cable tie around, the cable tie itself would cover the logo. So maybe I could put it through one of the holes or maybe just keep it simple and stick it in the middle. I'm gonna use Inkscape, which is vector-based software like Adobe Illustrator, but it's free. And this will allow me to create the vector paths for the laser cutter to follow. Now, the holes for the screw-in thread were pretty straightforward, but I'm unsure how long to make the slit so that the top can push through like a belt. All right, idea. I can cut one where the split part is all different lengths, then just find the best fit. Although this comes with a duct, it's getting upgraded with today's sponsor, Hon and Guan, with their eight inch ducting. For use with their eight inch inline duct oh, fan. Like bigger than my head. This thing rips. With 760 cubic feet per minute, you'll extract those fumes outside in no time. Now, eight inches is a large step up from the built-in vent. However, I modeled up an adapter, which will allow for my two laser cutters to feed into the single pipe for now. And in the future, I can take advantage of that 760 CFM power and add my 3D printers, routing it all through ducting out to roof vent. Plus, there's a built-in speed controller, so you can ramp it up to 3,500 RPM. To upgrade your setup, head to their website and Amazon store, linked in the description below. Although I've used multiple industrial grade and hobbyist laser cutters, I've never used Lightburn, but with my prior knowledge, it should be straightforward. This software converts my vector-based file into G-code instructions for the machine. It automatically detected the Falcon 2 Pro and loaded the preset file. However, the built-in camera that feeds to a USB-C daughter board needs to be plugged into your computer separately as it's a USB webcam. This requires manual calibration within the Lightburn software. Thankfully, Creality includes the calibration card required for the process in Lightburn, which once completed, it overlaid a bird's eye view of the workspace so it could easily position the design file on the material. But I forgot to manually focus for one of the calibration tests and I got a surprise. A class 4 laser can burn your retina and cause blindness. The enclosed design offers protection to anyone that walks in the room, including pets. Unlike non-enclosed, open frame laser cutters like the non-pro Falcon 2. Cranked to the max, the 40 watt dyed laser slices through this 19 mil thick piece of pine wood. Here we can see the blue beam isn't visible through the orange laser shield that is built into the laser module. However, when viewing from outside the enclosure, there is visible blue light through the red laser shield. What confuses me is there was a green pair of glasses included in the box. Creality advised the glasses are for traditional reasons and not necessary when the cover is on. Makes sense, as they list an FDA Class 1 safety certification as the number one feature. Now scrolling down reveals a graph, which highlights how much of the 455 nanometer wavelength blue light is being absorbed. There's no number or rating, just an arrow pointing up. And what is the green and orange comparison to? As they included green glasses in the box and the orange laser shield attached to the laser module blocks the blue light to my visible level. But their red enclosure through the thin or thick side doesn't block blue light to my visible level. That's not to mention this panel gap that was easily done through user assembly due to no overlap in material, only discovered when laser light literally leaked through. There's also the USB-C camera pass-through holes, which literally are a hole in the laser shield. Sure, it can be partially blocked by the USB-C cable, but what about the other side? That's just a hole in case you want to 
switch the panel sides for ventilation pass through. Remember, direct and scattered, which is reflected, class four laser light can do damage to your eyes. I'm personally not comfortable with the amount of visible blue light through the enclosure. So until I get myself a pair of certified laser glasses with a high optical density rating and labeled chart, I'll be turning around, closing and covering my eyes with the included non-certified for laser safety glasses and relying on the built-in fire detection. So I ran a quick cut with paper to check that the hole sizes were okay, then grabbed some leather from a bag of off cuts that I have. Burning leather smells horrible, so the new fan will help vent outside. Now I'm using real leather, as fake vegan leather can be from PVC, which when vaporized by a laser beam, creates toxic chlorine gas. Real vegetable tan leather, however, is a natural material. Yo, I did it. God, it smells bad. Like second last one. That was too hard to go through. That pass through bit's perfect. I'm going to add my logo, which I'll make black, and I'll keep the cut lines red. This way it's easy to program the software to engrave the black graphics and cut the red parts. I wasn't pleased with the default engraved quality, but I was able to increase the details in the software. And after some trial and error, I was able to find the sweet spot for laser power and speed for quality and depth. Each hole had a slit of varying length, so I was able to test the pressure to press through, as well as the spacing when wrapping around various cable bunch thicknesses. And so after some final adjustments, we're ready to start making our final cable ties. Here's my first impressions of the Falcon 2 Pro. The good, having an enclosure for fume extraction, an emergency stop button, as well as a key, which will be handy if you have children. Air assist being included with built-in pressure adjustment and readout, as well as fire and dirty lens detection. It's neat you can disable half of the dives to make a thinner and more precise 22 watt equivalent beam. And for engraving intricate details, they include a 1.6 watt module. And finally, I love that these slats can be laid flat and that the tray can be removed for easy cleaning. What could be improved is adding autofocus, removing the need to manually focus each material with a focus block. There also weren't instructions in the manual for adjusting the mounting block, which requires prior knowledge of concentric nuts. And although it has a large workspace of 400 by 415 mil and lots of power, the max speed of 416.7 millimeters per second isn't as fast as competitors in this power range. And obviously I'm concerned there are holes, which I can read the class four laser warning label through, as well as the amount of visible blue light to my eyes through the laser shield, even at low power levels. With the 40 watt model around 3,100 and 22 watt around 2,100 Australian dollars, I'd recommend checking out the x F1 as it has autofocus, moves faster and has Wi-Fi, which is important if you don't have a laptop or desktop PC in the same room. And it often goes on sale for around the same price as this Falcon 2. Now I haven't used the F1 before, but I did buy my x M1 multiple years ago. I've never had an issue and I've never seen blue light through its dark orange laser shield lid. In the end, I made my cuts and wiped off the excess carbon that's left over from vaporizing the leather. I know, right? How cool are laser cutters? I had a random idea to use Posca paint pens to color in some of the engravings. And although it was quite tricky with the fibrous edges, I somewhat stayed inside the lines. Oi, man, these are so freaking cool. Ended up with a few all natural, some colored, which the orange, like look at that pop. And a surprise, white. Yeah, you didn't see that coming, did you? This has a really nice natural contrast and so, Oh my, the white with the red cable, black on white. Oi, look at that assortment. This is the first custom product I've made that I thought could be some merch. So if you would want one, let me know in the comments below. I think the white would definitely be the easiest to pump out a batch because it doesn't require hand painting. I'll also drop the file as a free download in the description below. If you liked today's video, thumbs it. If you loved it, sub it. And I'll see you when we make a mini server for the hard drives in those hard cases. Bye.